let's talk a little bit about the paths these signals take to your house. Since we've already told you that we're using the same television, television bands, the same television channels, they're the same size, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that the paths they take are the same. On this graphic here, we're showing you the broadcast band. And if you'll notice, in the green, we're showing the television channels. One of the things you should notice is that even though on the television dial they're right next to each other, in reality, they're actually separated. In between channels 6 and 7, there's some space. In between channel 13 and, and 14, there's some space. As a matter of fact, if you'll notice, the FM broadcast band, FM radio, is actually just above channel 6. So it should be noted that because these channel bands are in different portions of the spectrum, they behave differently when they're being broadcast. So let's talk a little bit about the behavior. If you're watching low band VHF, low band VHF is the lowest power to travel the furthest. So it's a very economical way to get the signal out. The downside is, is that because it's lower power, it's very susceptible to electrical noise. The white sparkles you see on the picture of an analog set when someone turns on a vacuum cleaner or a blender. Uh, it also requires a much larger antenna. As you go down in channels, the receive antenna gets larger. The next area to look at is the high band VHF, channels 7 through 13. In this case, when you're using those channels, you're trading power for distance. It's a pretty good trade. It takes more power to go as far, but the advantage you gain is, is it's much less susceptible to electrical noise and you can use a much smaller antenna to receive it. The final area to look at is the UHF band. UHF requires the most amount of power to go the same distance. However, its advantage, it is Im completely immune to electrical noise, and it also requires a much smaller antenna to be received. So if at your home you're watching analog television that's on VHF and UHF, you shouldn't be surprised that when digital services start, they're going to be on VHF and UHF as well. well. Let's look at some of these propagation paths that Bill was talking about. First of all, analog and digital uh, signals travel essentially in a straight line. For a 2,000 foot tower, that line of sight limit is due to the horizon, somewhere around 50 to 60 miles away from the transmitter. Unfortunately, in many areas, there are terrain effects that can adversely affect that propagation. For instance, if you have hills and mountains, that will block the signal. But not just um, naturally occurring obstructions, man-made obstructions such as buildings and water towers and so forth. Looking on the next diagram, we can see um, that there are multiple paths possible possible because of reflections off of these buildings and water towers, etc. The key thing is you desire one direct path between transmitter and receiver for the best reception. If you have a directional antenna with a narrow enough beam, you may be able to reject some or maybe even all of these extra echoes that exist at the uh, antenna input. Finally, on the next slide, you will see that you can have some multipath effects in the home, bouncing off the walls and other objects coming in through various windows and so forth, making DTV reception much more difficult than with an outdoor antenna, which is why we greatly encourage you to use outdoor antennas whenever possible. Really? You really?